Hey guys and gals. Today we are going to do a nib inking demonstration and we're going to do it with my handy box of nibs and all the ones I want to demonstrate have been marked with a little piece of sticky tape. And today we're going to take a look at how the Browse Steno inks. So if you've been interested in trying out new nibs, this might be just the video for you. So keep watching. So I've noodled and doodled about with the steno before, but I have never sat down and done a little field test. So we're gonna use my Tachikawa nib holder and just slide it in. It's a little bit of a tight fit. And we're going to be using FW Acrylic Ink in Payne's Gray today. And I've already got my illustration doodled out. So all we really have to do is start inking. Now, something you're gonna wanna have is a little scrap piece of paper just to test the pin out on as you go. And rather than filling a dinky dip, I'm just going to go ahead and begin inking and I will narrate with my comments. The steno seems to be a very soft pointed pen. It was originally used for shorthand notes and it does not have a large ink capacity. Ooh. Okay, that means we got to leave that area alone. Come back to it in a minute. It does not really have a lot of ink capacity. As you can see, I keep railroading out. And we are inking in my Inktober 2016 Denik sketchbook, which has very smooth paper, but not necessarily the best inking paper. So to be honest, I may end up revisiting this test because I'm getting a lot of spidering and I can't decide whether or not that is the nib, the ink, it shouldn't be the ink because I do use this ink. or the paper. I'm hoping it's the paper, but it might just be that the nib just puts down too much ink. Oh, it's another area where, see all that blobbing out? It's a shame. So I'm finding it hard to get delicate line variation without big blobby problems, which would make this nib highly unsuitable for those of you who like to do delicate line work. And I am trying to use a light hand. I, I acknowledge that I tend to be heavy handed. This is not a good nib for that. We don't have to revisit this demonstration in a different sketchbook though. Oh, more spidering. I really think the paper is a big part of the problem. But this pen also puts, just lays down the ink overly generously. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's really a shame because it was kind of a cute little sketch. It's really a shame, but that's okay. Sometimes it's really better to sacrifice a little bit of time 
and acute but quick sketch rather than ruin a piece we actually really enjoyed. So I'd rather make my mistakes here than on something I really truly care about. All right. That was basically the Browse uh, Steno. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have to check in again in a different paper. So I'm going to actually continue the video. I'm going to clean this mess up, clean my hands up, get to that. Um, and I'll see you guys in a minute with a sketch on some plate bristol. And we'll see if that doesn't handle any better on there. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do ink test take two for the browse or bras steno. And I'm not using a dinky dip. I'm actually going to use a little sample pot cleaned out. And that should hopefully work a little bit better than just dipping it directly in the bottle. And then I can pour it back in. A dinky dip would be nice too though. And I probably have a clean one or many, many clean ones rolling around somewhere. I'm just too lazy to look. So we're gonna zoom it zoom on in. And we're going to grab a piece of scratch paper that will be off camera. And this was inked on Strathmore plate Bristol. So hopefully, hopefully this will go a little better. And we're going to go nice and slow. mainly because I just got back from a walk and my hands are shaking. Now if I were inking this with a fountain pen, this would be a bad time to ink because my hands are really hot and that's going to make the ink too viscous and it would be prone to just blooping out of the pen. But there shouldn't be too much conductivity between the wood and the metal of my nib. There's a lot to sort of insulate, insulate it. Now this paper is handling it better, but as you guys can see, the browse really wants to put down a lot of ink very quickly. It just wants to drop that ink on the paper. So I'm trying to have a very delicate hand while still having variation in my line work. Now, with a nib that's as prone to just dropping ink as this, I have to go much slower in order to build up my lines. So, you see, I started her eyes. I'm going to have to give that line plenty of time to dry. Having some trouble there where my hands are resting on the spiral. Makes it hard to get the line I want. Something nice about this pen is that on the right paper, you can kind of draw backwards with it too. So you can really approach the line um, in kind of a 3D way. You don't have to twist your pen in order to go back and try to get the correct angle. Now it puts down so much ink and so thickly. This might actually be really good for like conductive ink because you need a nice thick line for that. So I'll keep that in mind. But it's so thick that it makes my paper buckle from all the water it's putting down. And this is an acrylic ink we're using. So it actually doesn't have as much water as say a dye based ink. Um, and it's still having some problems with paper 
spark line and we're actually inking on plate bristol which is a thicker paper it's a little heavier than cardstock weight so it really doesn't normally give me this problem so perhaps the browse steno is just not a good pick for your average comic anchor or even illustrator and now we're pretty much just waiting on her eyelids to dry Yeah, it's starting to tear up the paper as I go into it. It's a little frustrating because adding that sort of dry time due to deposits of ink can really increase how long it takes for you to properly ink something. And you see, we're not able to get really fine, delicate lines at the corners of her eyes. Just kind of getting heavy handed glops because it cuts into the paper and it just sort of pulls down and I'll zoom in so you guys can hopefully really see what's going on so I'm trying to be very light-handed here in her eyes and even with very little pressure it's still putting down a lot of ink so brow steno um, it's easy on the hand my hand doesn't hurt but it is a little too flexible and it doesn't really hold on to the ink as much as I would like it just sort of lays it down onto the pa paper very quickly um, this might be an excellent pin for calligraphy especially with the right ink but unfortunately I cannot recommend this nib for comic artists and illustrators especially those who want a heavier cartoony style so we're gonna go ahead now if you have contrary experiences with this nib especially for illustration I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below make sure you link me to your work so I can see how you're using this nib I hope you guys enjoyed this little review of this little nib and I hope you guys will look forward to more of these quick nib reviews in the future so I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon Bye, guys.